Infectious diseases such as tuberculosis, TB, and COVID-19 spread through the air, infecting anyone who breathes. TB remains a leading cause of infectious death in South Africa, despite it being a preventable and curable disease. I am a drug-resistant TB survivor, and I lost my hearing uh, due to the TB medication. Today, I am a TB advocate, a TB proof, and I am passionate about high quality TB care for all and also those who are infected with TB. That is, we need free of stigma and discrimination in our society. TB stigma is keeping people from the high risk groups of those who have TB symptoms from accessing care, starting treatment, and getting cured. When we look through the lens of a TB patient's journey, combined with the scientific evidence on TB stigma, we can learn valuable lessons to close the gaps in the TB care cascade. There are three types of stigma, internal stigma, anticipated stigma, and enacted stigma. These are the types of stigma that we should look at in order for us to help over TB patients. So as a TB survivor, someone who's actually cured from the worst kind of TB, which is XDR TB, I have something to say about stigma. So I will focus now on internal stigma, because for some reason you blame yourself for having something that is so easy to cut, like you just breathe for one to get TB. So to the healthcare workers out there, it is not nice being shouted at because you are wearing your mask correctly, of which you are never taught on how to wear a mask correctly in the first place. So I did experience internal stigma whereby I had to question myself if I want to visit the health care facility because I do not want to be, you know, shamed for having TB. Anticipated stigma is coming from a worry of what people from the community or your family members think and would say about you because you have TB. An acted stigma is the type of stigma that you experience from somebody doing something towards you that is stigmatizing you. We use uh, metaphors to understand something and that is very damaging. Like for instance, being compared to a matchstick, which is a light, the thing that you use to light matches is not right. Being com uh, compared to something so bad that you feel so bad about yourself is not right. So people should stop using uh, stigmatizing languages, stigmatizing metaphors to describe someone who is sick of TB. This stigma is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a Abantu bagbiza nga magama nga magama ama ninzi. Kuslalwa iko kasmitingu nga awe. Ngelo kresha wena mtu uyakuna. I'm an ex-RTP survivor. I contacted TP in 2013 while I was coming from work and then I vomit blood that it was not an understanding thing because in our black community we know when you're vomiting blood you've been witchcraft. I did go to a private doctor and then they transferred me to a clinic and then when I was called to the clinic to come to face the results, I was closed in the room and put a, a given a green mask amasue and tell, told me I have an empty RTB. So I never had TB before. It was my first time to have tuberculosis. When we go through our medical training, the focus is always on the treatment and the diagnosis and the clinical care. But actually, when you're dealing with TB patients, it's how you make them feel that is of utmost importance. If you don't make them feel safe and cared for at the facility, then you're going to, the patient's not going to come back. You're going to lose those patients. They must understand that this person, it's a new thing to have TB. And they are having that anxiety, why me? What did I did wrong? What happened to me? Because what we, we, we notice in these years we've been working in this industry, Patient, they not finishing the treatment because of not understanding. They don't want to be seen in the TB room. They don't want to be seen when they're carrying a green card. The stigma of TB will not go away if we don't spend enough time with people, if we don't talk to them about the misconceptions about TB. 
So we do have many mental health care tools available for screening mental health and substances, but it's become in many ways a tick sheet that we fall off. What we would like to do is change the way that we do the screening in being able to reach a person at a human level and be able to talk to them and <coughs> care about them and find out what is going on in their lives and see how we can help them, where they need a referral to social workers, to psychologists, just so that they can know that they're understood and being cared for and supported at our facilities. Sitinga, amatebo. Alkuka abantu bokushala bonke, ukuze abantu bokushala bazi ngetipi. Ingando nwabi salondo, ngoba abantu ekushale ni abana lwazulu peleleyo malunga netipi. Ekbe ni na ulwazulu malunga netipi ndandi nge nalo, kora njitenda ubagu ziko lezi mbilo, nda wazi umoshuko. It's only thing is to understand one another. You are the patient and now I'm having a new life uh, my name is called patient. I'm no longer a normal person. And you bring me to this platform of becoming a patient. But how could we work together one-on-one -on -one patient and the community healthcare worker? So we, what we've been looking at is trying to change the way we care for our patients and seeing how we can change our system so that the focus is actually more on mental health and being the human to human. Only then we will be providing person-centered care to these uh, inspiring TV champions. Abantu bokushala, kufuneka babambisane nabo bantu abate batacha zelwa sisi fose TV. Babonise ufilwani, kubanabanina angakuna.